Coach Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside, all ready to go with another one of those big days of championship wrestling. David, Oh, howdy. you're right. Hey, the opening match today is going to be a goodie. We're going to have the Sheep Herders in here, tag team action right off the bat. Following that, we're going to have the Fantastics in a little bit later. Rick Casey will be here. Dirty Rhodes will be here. Coco Ware. Dutch Mantell, Buddy Landell will be going against Tracy Smothers and Billy Travis yeah. in an expiration of time match. It should be a goodie. That could be an awfully interesting mm -hmm. match coming down to that one. We've got that, and always, as usual, we will have some of those special features. Done a little research you might be interested in, and we are going to be back to the ring in the first match in just a moment. <laughs> Fulton and Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics. And your opponents coming into the area right now. Okay, Tony. Wait just a second. All right, Tony Falk, yeah. Let me tell you something. I come out here before and I might underestimate my opponent a little bit. And things didn't turn out the way I planned. But let me tell you, that's not going to happen again because I've been training real hard and I know what I can do now. So the Fantastics are going to get beat right here today. I've wrestled them before and I know what they do wrong. And I got a partner right here today and we will beat the Fantastics. Tony, uh, I was going to do this a little later in the show, but uh, this, this just uh, is as good a time as any. I did a little research in there on your record. And I thought it might be interesting to run down the Tony Falk record at this point. As we know, it is not the best in the business, but you can see it right on the screen. Tony Falk, zero wins. You don't have to show that. On the law side, 37. Well, I didn't have to, but I thought it was only fair. So today, you're going to break that, that record. Let me tell you something, Lance Russell. You don't have to show that. Now you done made me mad, and when I get mad, I'm uncontrollable. Let me tell you something, Fantastic. You better look out, because Tony Falk's going to beat you today. Well, it was only a separate a matter of uh, record that we wanted to bring the folks up to date with. Okay, Dave, we may have history being made today. It's possible one fall, 15-minute time limit match from St. Louis, Missouri, Tony Falk, and from Memphis, Tennessee, Keith Eric. their total weight, 432 pounds. Going against them at a total weight of 449 pounds from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, the Fantastics. They wear the Southern Tag Team titles around their waist. This is a non-title match, one fall, 15-minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Okay, Falk and Eric representing one side of the ring and Bobby and Tommy on the other side. Let's who will be starting. Falk, who is fired up. He said himself, ready to do it. We're ready to see him in action against Bobby Fulton as the Fantastics getting a little support from the crowd out there as Tommy Rogers drums it up. We've said this two or three times as he was taken over and down in there. Falk has the physical stature, Dave. He's got the size, the son of a gun, makes some good wrestling moves. But he just makes mistakes, critical mistakes. Exactly. He makes mistakes at exactly the wrong time, and his opponents have been able to take advantage of him rather easily. Uh, well, in some cases, not easily, but they've been able to take advantage of him and, uh, and get the victory. And therefore, Tony Falk is, as you pointed out, winless against 37 losses. Uh, you can look at it two ways. In one respect, the fact that seeking that first win can fire Tony up and he gets a little embarrassed and then mad because of that record and make him try harder. But on the other hand, it may make him press a little more than he normally would. And he doesn't need any help in making those critical mistakes that you pointed out. He does that rather naturally. Well, we get off of Tony's back. He's in there with Rogers, grabs a hair, runs him back into the turnbuckles, clubs him with a right hand. Leapfrog, beautiful Ooh. drop kick. Hooks that arm over and down, goes Falk, and there's a tag on Bobby Fulton. There was an example of one of those mistakes uh, for Tony Falk, and when you do that to uh, Tommy Rogers, you don't stand in the same place, or you're gonna get a good drop kick right in the face, and that's what happened to Falk. 
You got that. Back to the corner, Fulton takes a right. Falk going after him. He's using, he's using the right fist and Bobby Fulton says, hey, guess what? I got one myself. Keith Erick jumps in, takes one. Fantastics with a high five up there. They got it going against Tony Falk and uh, his partner Keith Eric, who wandered in there too unofficially. It's that kind of attitude though, Davey, that uh, the Fantastics have, that they're not at all afraid to pull it out. When you go against a team like the Sheep Herders, uh, these guys aren't afraid to break the rules if that's what it says. They'll beat the Sheep Herders to their own tricks sometimes. I mean, it's that kind of an attitude, I think, that got them uh, the Southern Tag Team titles. They know when to pull it out. I think you're right. And not only do they have the titles, they are, uh, have defended them. They're excellent Southern Tag Team champions. In the ring with a standing side headlock, Bobby Fulton, Keith Eric. Referee is Jerry Calhoun. Down goes Eric. Eric snapped over and down as uh, Fulton married him onto the mat, right back up on his feet. Look at that. The change from the mat right back up. That's kind of like the transition game in basketball. Yeah, huh? good comparison. And uh, these two guys are a team. That's one thing you notice about some great tag teams that you'll see. They do work as a team, not as two individuals. Certainly that's true of Tommy and Bobby. Keith Eric on the mat. Uh, Tommy with a pretty good headlock on him. Now Keith back up on his feet. Nice move for Keith, but oh. Uh, well, he was congratulating himself on outsmarting Tommy. Tommy grabbed that left arm and put him right on the mat. Fulton hops up to the second rope. Gives it a little hot doggy, and the crowd loves that. Drops down on the arm, and there's a tag on Tony Falk. Tony Falk, the biggest of the four participants in this tag team match. He's back in there after starting. He did not have a lot of luck when he was in there the first time. He made a good move at that point. He used his left arm to, to kind of tap Bobby upside that side of the face, slipped around to the right and hooked into a standing side headlock, which that advantage has long since passed as Fulton. Hit toss followed by two drop kicks. Rogers comes in to help out. Keith Eric, who dropped his nose into the middle of it, just got himself a hit buster from Fulton. Bobby coming back over after Tony Falk while Rogers taking care of Eric in the corner. Back drop, and boy, Bobby got him up there in the air. Falk rolls to the floor, Eric going after Tommy. Keith Eric. We just had a change. Nobody made a tag on either side. You know, I was wondering whether my <laughs> mind was wandering or whether that was true. That's no. true. The referee was like, where? There's so much going on. You, uh, you, you oftentimes will overlook things like that. Well, there again, I guess to go back to basketball, no harm, no foul. That yeah. is, you had yeah. one each man in there, so... Uh, there was the tag, and Bobby Fulton is the one that takes over as Eric goes to the eyes. A right hand from Falk. Tony hammers the head in. Past five and a half minute mark, and Fulton goes into the corner. He faked him, put his foot up. Falk thought he was going to stay there. Falk was making a move to ram that foot, and he stepped out of the way and went right to the corner. Good move, Fulton. Tommy Rogers taking over. Tony Falk flying through the air again. He's been doing that a lot today. The Fantastics have been uh, accommodating him. Look out. Together they go. Tony Falk and Keith Eric both hit the mat. Great drop kick by Tommy Rogers on Look here. Double pin. Both Eric and Falk cradle down. We're going to have to revise our research there. It, it changes it now. That's true. It's now a zero and 38. 38. That's exactly. There it there is. It is right zero there. and 38. 
we have updated our statistics on Tony Falk and uh, his record remains intact. He has yet to win out of 38 starts and the winners, the Fantastics. We'll take time and be back in a moment. A reminder, Championship Wrestling in Borden, Indiana, on Thursday, February the 20th, a great car with Dutch Mantel, the fantastic Bill Dundee, Rick Casey, and Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Monday, February the 10th, Wrestling in Lewisport, Kentucky, at the Hancock County High School, tickets on Southie High School. I want to tell you about Wednesday night in Evansville. You will see a great card, including Southern Tag Title Fantastics and the Blade Runners, a grudge match with Nature Boy Buddy Landell and Dutch Mantel against Casey and Dirty Rhodes, and a Southern Heavyweight title back in town, Universal Heartthrob Austin Idol against this man, the living lady. Get out of here, hey, punk. Nobody wants more. to look at you, brother. Now, let me tell you something. Everybody's taken up the challenge, Dutchman, since we run who out of ten? Jerry, somebody. Jerry, yeah. You can't remember the him? Name escapes me yeah. right now. Then there was another one come along. His name was Steve Kern. He's gone. Now, Austin Idol, he's taken up the challenge. Everybody wants to be the king of the hill. Wrong, Daddy. There's only three kings of the hill here, Daddy. The Dutchman, the nature boy, and the superstar. Idol, you don't have what it takes. The Patriots thought they would have taken the Bears. They didn't have it Jack, they run all over them, 44 to 3, Daddy. And that's what's going to happen right here in Evansville. We're going to run all over the competition. We're going to run all over you, Daddy. And Idol, I'm personally doing it to you. And my friend, the Dutchman and the Nature Boy, going to do it to two, what did you call them, low down? Two low, what is worse than one low life Texan like Casey? Two low. Two of them, and you throw in dirty roads, and that's what's worse than one, is two together. For the uninformed, Dutch Mantel is still the international heavyweight champion. I'm going to stay as long as I I possibly can. I may even retire with it. But I want you people to watch real close. Watch your TV because I'm going to show you people what happens to other people like Dirty Rhodes who stick their nose into other people's business. Now, Rhodes has got a bad, bad habit of doing that. He's doing it here. He's done it all over the country. But me and Buddy Landell found a way to cure people from being real nosy because he came in there and we left him laying like a stuck <laughs> pig. Boy, he was bleeding head to toes. And we're going to do it all over again. Casey Rhodes, get ready. We're coming. We're going to be back in the ring here in just one moment with the team of Rick Casey and uh, Dirty Rhodes getting together. Uh, Casey was teamed with Coco Ware in a match with the Sheepherders. That automatically spells doggone good match, rugged and all that sort of thing. But I want you to watch and see what happened. We got some highlights out of it. Morgan climbing up on the rope. He kind of half fell and half jumped. graceful guy in the world lost his balance a little as Coco was shaking the rope and look at the warrior go boy he is battling it the Birdman slams Morgan boy down on the floor Casey getting up Dirty Rhodes I think is down here comes Dundee what is this this will be a disqualification says ring the bell. Here comes Buddy Landell. Dutch Mantell. Mantell after Casey. Dundee after Ware. Dirty Rhodes caught by Buddy Landell. Head slammed into the post. Morgan, it, what do you say? Disqualification for the interference. For the interference on which side? We had Dirty in and Dundee in. Casey and Coco are the winners on the disqualification. Dundee jumped in, I think, first. Dirty Rhodes came after that. They've got Casey strung up with a whip over on the side of the ring. Dirty, whose face is messed up by Buddy Landell. Coco Ware being annihilated by the Sheep Herders and Dundee. And Casey just being choked with that whip. Fantastic. Rogers and Ford. 
Fulton going after the sheep herders. Billy Travis. Hickerson, the spoiler. And the rest of them take off. Oh, was that wild, huh? Yeah. Good mm. night, that was something else. Hey, we got some action and coming in right now. Rick Casey and Dirty Rose getting ready for our next bow, Davey. It'll be one fall, 15-minute time limit. Introducing from parts unknown at a total weight of 458 pounds, the Invaders. And going against them at 527 pounds total weight. From Austin, Texas, Dirty Roads, and his partner from San Antonio, Texas, Rick Casey. This match will be one fall, 15 minute time limit. And once again, referees Jerry Calhoun. Okie do, climbing out, Casey starting, and the taller of the invader, invader number one, will be opening up against him. Uh, we've seen them, what, once? They've been or? here once before. I don't recall whether they won or lost in that match. We've seen them before, but uh, they have been with us uh, about four or five weeks ago. Rick out of San Antonio, Dirty out of Austin, Texas. Ooh, nice move by Casey. He had a backhanded chop on the invader. Upper arms, both of them, by Rick Casey and Dirty Rhodes. Dirty stays in there. Has the invader over his shoulder. It's like he's trying to decide where he wants to place him as he slams him down to the mat. Just pick a place, huh? I think he was trying to kill a fly with him. He slammed him down <laughs> on top. Dirty, an interesting kind of a guy. I love to be around him. He's got a great sense of humor and... Uh, he is big. He too, is. 301 know. pounds. I was just thinking, that. sitting there looking, he doesn't look that. I mean, when you look at the guy on television, he does not look to be as massive as he is, but he's got huge legs. Oh. Casey. Is he clean? Mm. He is really went to work on him. This is the shorter of the invaders. High up in the air over his back. Rick Casey. The upper arm. Referee says, yes, sir. Saw it. I was right there. It was okay. The invader off the rope. Dirty Rhodes gets him with the upper arm. Rick and Dirty both bearing scars of previous battles as uh, they're living proof right in there now that it ain't easy. Rick Casey, whoa, whoa. he just let the other invader have it. I guess he didn't like his looks over here in the corner, and he smashed him. Boy, oh, we missed that son of a gun on camera, but I am here to tell you, he put him all the way over to the interview set with that shot. Woo! Casey doing a number on the invader number two. Yeah. Last round up there, the Bulldog. Turns him around, count as one, and two, and that's it. Give Dirty Rhodes an assist as he kept the other invader out of the way. Two minutes, 29 seconds the time, and there are their hands raised. Invader number two, and he was caught in that side headlock as Rick started uh, the windup for the bulldog in there. He tried to drop his legs to put the brakes on and, and stop him from it, but no way. Rick had that head of steam up there, and he busted him down, got the one, two, three, and came out uh, with the victory in there. Uh, kind of an interesting behind the scenes thing that's been taking place and, and Dundee, uh, he not only is, is cocky and a lot of other words you could use to describe him, he's vindictive too. He, uh, he won the loser leave town with Lawler right. and he not only is not satisfied that Lawler is no longer wrestling in the area, he didn't want him to breathe I think. He got an injunction to keep him from appearing in any kind of thing. You lose the loser leave town, that means you can't be anything. In addition to that, to where he could not sell, uh, not he, but the company that uh, uh, that markets the Jerry Lawler cassette, that, yeah, that the video, little cassette, yeah. right, uh, independent media, and he got an injunction where that when you lose, stay out. So he, he looks, <laughs> don't wow. look at me. They felt the same way. Not only that, it was their money invested in the marketing. So independent media uh, in an action up in New Jersey. Well, we've got an interesting piece I want you to see right here. 
I'm here on the courthouse steps where just moments ago the Bill Dundee injunction preventing all sales of the Jerry Lawler video was lifted. Attorneys for Dundee argued that Jerry Lawler's agreement to a loser leave town match and his subsequent losing extended to the selling of anything connected to the king, namely the Jerry Lawler video. The tension filled courtroom was packed with wrestling notables, including ranking members from the commissioner's office. During the court proceedings, the judge repeatedly slammed his gavel down, threatening to clear the courtroom if the attorneys for Dundee could not control their clients' outbursts and unruliness. As attorneys for the cassette distributors successfully contended that jury losing and leaving town is one thing, but Dundee cannot force the memory of Jerry Lawler to leave as well. The Jerry Lawler video serves that right. Here with me now is John J. Berzichelli, Chief Executive Officer of the Cassette Distributors. Mr. Berzichelli, a happy moment for you today. I have to say that we're absolutely delighted with the outcome, judge's decision. It was a very lengthy battle, an expensive one, but we were under mandate to do it. Uh, and also like to formally announce that the video cassette is being shipped as of today and again available to wrestling fans and Jerry Lawler fans across the country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berzichelli. I'm sure that's very good news for wrestling fans throughout the country. And I have with me Mr. Dennis Carluzzi, representative attorney for Mr. Bill Dundee. Your thoughts on today's proceedings? Jerry Lawler may have been a king in court today, but when it comes to the ring, Bill Dundee is the new king of professional wrestling. Long live the new king. This is not going to end here. My associate and myself intend to appeal this, and that's all we have to say. Thank you, Mr. Carluzzi. Well, there you have it. I'm sure this won't end at this point. This is Dominic Dean on special assignment, the courthouse. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, hey, it looks like they had pretty good weather up in New Jersey, too. Yeah, that's a fun back there. But yeah. that's kind of an interesting thing, but I think it does clarify any of the stuff, you know, about Jerry, because sure. Dundee, every time we've seen the son of a gun, he's always, it's, it's just absolutely unbelievable. I think what he also wanted him to do is make him sell uh, any property that he had or anything like that, and, and the whole deal. He figured, boy, that's the whole thing. Proves out it is not. What all of this argument was about in terms of the cassette uh, let's take a look. This right. is exactly what they're talking about. Nothing more appropriate than we should take just a moment to talk about an outstanding new video that you may want to add to your collection. This one is called Jerry the King Lawler, Wrestling's Royalty, Volume 1 of the Collector Series. Now, in this uh, tape, you are going to find all of the great highlights of the outstanding life and career of Jerry Lawler. Yes, sir, it's available right now. I'd make it a point. Don't procrastinate. That is, put it off. No, sir, get it right now. You can do it by calling one 800 524 2507. That phone number again is five is one eight hundred five two four two five zero seven. How much? Twenty nine ninety five plus five ninety five postage and handling. And actually, that is very very little for all that you get in the Jerry Lawler collector's item. You'll want to get it and add it to your collection. Once again, the phone number one eight hundred five two four two five zero seven. You know, it's kind of a phenomenon that, that has come along, the video cassettes of wrestling, and it's great. I tell you what I do with them, Davey, and, and, uh, and really enjoy doing is, is use the slow-mo on, on the tape, you know? Yeah, so to, you can to watch all that great spot. action. Yeah, yeah and you can pick it out, and you see things like these drop kicks, and, and boy, you just sit there astounded. At, at the tremendous agility and athletic ability these guys have. And it's the under, power of yeah. the drop kick, especially, yeah. yeah. Okay, we uh, uh, wanted to run the, uh, that, that particular piece uh, from New Jersey to clarify that uh, to what we're all talking about was the Jerry Lawler cassette. Sure. So you can now buy it. Right. Okay. <laughs> we're going to take time out. We're going to be back in a moment. <laughs> On Thursday, February the 20th, Dutch Mantel, the Fantastics, Bill Dundee, Rick Casey, Nature Boy, Buddy Landell. You will see wrestling in Lewisport, Kentucky. Looking forward to Monday, February the 10th, Hancock County High School in Lewisport. You will see a super card, including the great stars of championship wrestling. Advanced tickets at high school, tickets on sale at Lewisport Pharmacy. Wrestling coming up in Evansville. Listen to this great card Wednesday night. You will see Tojo Yamamoto against the Raider. Billy Travis against Pat Rose in what should be a great match. Larry Hamilton, newcomer to the area, against Tony Falk. Then what should be a great wild tag team battle when Buddy, Nature Boy Landell, and Dutch Mantell wrestles against Dirty De Rhodes and Rick Casey. You will also see a Southern Tag Team Championship match, Fantastics and Blade Runners, and the classic confrontation main event, Austin Idol and Bill Superstar Dundee. We'll see you Wednesday in Evansville. Well, we're in the research and business on Tony Falk. We did a little research on the Dundee Coco Ware feud. 
I think it may be interesting to see the fee people, um, for them to see this. Uh, you remember when Dundee and uh, Coco Ware it was all involved in trading out a match for a shot at Ric Flair. Let's take a look at this uh, as a matter of history. Dundee, I will put this Mid-America belt on the line right here on TV if you sign me your contract against Ric Flair. Okay, let me get huh? this straight now. You put this belt on the line. If I'll sign over, if I can't beat you, yeah, you beat me. You wrestle Ric Flair Monday night. You're right. Woo, that's me. We can beat him. Can't we? Eddie Marlin knocked down by Dundee as he was shoved into Coco Ware. This Bill Hickerson. Now we got Dundee and Hickerson battling on the floor. Here's Jerry Jarrett. Dundee on the ropes, Jarrett shaking the ropes, Dundee falls down into the ring, Coco drops down on him, there's the cover, there's the referee, one, two, three! Coco, where? Beats Bill Dundee! Crowd hollering, Dundee comes roaring in, throws powder in Dusty Rhodes' eyes, this is right in the middle of the Ric Flair, Coco Ware match. Meanwhile, taking advantage, buries one on Coco, one, two, three, got him. Oh boy. 23 minutes and 14 seconds, being distracted by Dundee. Ric Flair takes advantage of it, I can't blame him for that. Hey, come on, hey, Eddie, Eddie, get somebody out here. Not Dutch Mantel. Let's say, hey, come on. Coco. Oh, boy, I'm telling you. Coco Ware got triggered by watching that. He comes roaring out here. Dex Dundee. I don't blame him for being hot. Dundee may have cost him that world title in there, but this is not the way to settle it. One, and I got me a whole bag full of money. And I'm going to share it with all you rednecks. Right You're going to share some of your money? Right here. This is full of gold coins, brother. And I was going to share it with all you rednecks. Right and I got the spirit, baby. Look at him, Dundee. Oh, they're, oh, they're, they're nothing but pennies. What's wrong with you? Where are the bills at? Where are the big bucks at? Come on, get that on your hands and knees. Dundee throwing our pennies out all over the floor. action you saw there was with Randy Hills at ringside in uh, Louisville Gardens in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, Buddy Landell picked up with the aid of Dundee uh, that belt from Coco. Okay, Davey. All right, this is going to be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. Introducing from parts unknown at 208 pounds, the Mask Patriot, and going against him from Union City, Tennessee, 222 pounds, Coco Ware. This match will be one fall, 15 minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Double time. We're off and running with the Mask Patriot. First look at him going against Coco Ware. And Coco kind of going at it. Woo! Boy, he is pounding and swinging. Good night. He is clubbing away. Caught him with a clothesline you can't believe. Coco Ware. Just ripping the mask Patriot apart. He really jumped on him, Davey. I don't know if Coco was able to see any of that tape or not, but if he was, it had to inspire him to come yeah. out here and go to really. Oh boy, he is really working on the Patriot. 
Top of the boot to the back. Patriot trying to hang on to the ropes, and Coco right there. Jumping up and down on it. Coco Ware, I guess, is fired up and going as we have ever seen him. With the Patriot. He drives him down into the mat. And that's going to be at one, two, three. Not much of a contest. Not and even close. Coco Ware just totally demolished him. I want to tell you, took him out of action. Uh. Where the winner? What was the time? A minute three, 103. And I mean a minute three of execution, too. Uh, Coco Ware, as you said, may have been irritated when he when he caught a glimpse of that uh, action that took place in Louisville when Buddy Landell got that Mid-America title for him. We uh, want to take a look a little bit more. Randy Hales at ringside. Now Landell with the comments. I will show you. champion. We have a new champion thanks to the interference of Bill Dundee. Express. Dundee with more powder throws it in his eyes. Rick Morton rolling around the ring. Dundee goes after him, picks him up, nails him with a right fist. Okay, Bill Dundee's bad to the bone. Hey, We're ready to go. I want you to know that's out this broad last night, driving around in my new Mark Seven. And she was a magician, can you believe it? I'm driving down the road, she rubs me on the leg and I turn into a motel. Get it? Uh, okay, Dave, let's have the introductions to All the right. match. Expiration of time match coming up here. Introducing at a total weight of 453 pounds from Springfield, Tennessee, Tracy Smothers and his partner from Louisville, Kentucky, Billy Travis. Going against him at a total of 453 pounds from Oil Trough, Texas, Dutch Mantel and his partner from California wearing the Mid-America Championship belt, Nature Boy Buddy Landell. This match to the expiration of time, Jerry Calhoun will be the referee. Okay, referee says one in, one out. We'll find out who it's going to be. 
As Buddy Landell steps out, Dutch will be starting against Tracy Smothers. Smothers with the size, Dutch with the vast experience, no question about that. Billy Travis, Tracy Smothers, both young wrestlers. But you know, it's funny. I don't think of Travis, you know, being, and last year he's a rookie, his first year in the business. He was rookie of the year with a wrestling fan. I think it's a background he has. He, he has a varied background already in professional wrestling, yeah. and he's, he's had some mean partners and mean opponents in that year. Tracy Smothers standing side headlock on the Dutchman over to the corner. There's a tag on Billy. Hot property. Handful of hair by Dutch Mantell. Referee caught it and stopped that. A little mare down with the Dutch, but he's rolled up his shoulders, gets a one count, and he kicks back out of it. Tag on the Nature Boy and Landell. Slips in, and the referee's trying to get Mantell to get out of there. Boy, this Landell has been something else since he came back into the territory. Travis mm. uh -huh. got him. Good reversal. Yeah. Tracy. What I like to see out of Tracy, a little aggressiveness, boy. He busted him with a forearm, but Billy propped him up. That's great. I don't encourage rule breaking, Dave, but uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, Landell now is uh, raising a protest. He's, oh, he's complaining about having his tights pulled, I think. Landell lodging the formal, well, the informal protest with the referee. Ooh. He let loose with that chop. Mantella knows boots. Boy, he loves to put that boot in the midsection of his opponents, and he did it then to Billy Travis. Rugged team, Mantell and Landell, and look at Travis right back at him. Handful of hair puts him down on the mat. Expiration of time, so whatever we got, we're going to use it for wrestling action. Hey, Mantell. Uh oh, that's a break the hold. He's pulling the tights, extra leverage, and the referee caught it. They didn't give up the hold he had on him. Dutch tried to cut loose before the referee's eyes got around there, but not successful. <laughs> well, Landell, well, that's a vicious move that Landell uses there. You know, that side drop kick and close in. So it's interesting uh, you mentioning that, Davey, because that move with Landell, that little standing uh, drop kick when he is right next to somebody, in a sense, it reminds me of Mantell, the way he looks like he's going to start that whip off the rope, and he's right next to you when he starts the whip, and then wham, he'll hit you with that clothesline, mm -hmm. catch you unaware, and put you right off your feet. Good move, Billy Travis, the Dutch. Slipped back in, got caught in a side headlock. Shoulder puts him down. Oh, how quick. Sneaky nature boy. Popped him with a knee right in the back, and Mantell drops him down on the mat. One, two, I believe he's got him. Three. 3.56 the time on it. Well, let me tell you what, that was three minutes and 56 seconds of good solid action in there, and you saw two very fine veterans even though you don't like their attitude, working together in Mantell and Landell. They got it. That's only the first fall. We've got more of it coming up. Be back to it in a moment.
Championship Wrestling Board in Indiana, Thursday, February the 20th. Wrestling in Lewisport, Kentucky on Monday, February the 10th. And a super card coming up in Evansville, Indiana, Wednesday night. You will see a Southern Tag title. You will see Bill Dundee, Austin Idol in a Southern Heavyweight title match. And you will also see Buddy Nature Boy Landell and Dutch Mantell against Rick Casey and this man. Brother, Eddie you're going to see a war. You talk about misinformed. I heard Dundee and M uh, Mantell, I didn't run their mouth. But uh, the score of the Bears game was 46 to 10, if that matters. But I'm going to tell you something, brother. We're not misinformed as to sticking my nose in business. Bill Dundee, you come down there and start that whole mess, brother. Lantel, Mandel, you're going to have to finish it, brother. you got to play blood for blood. Yeah, you got some for me. Now you got to give it up Wednesday night in Evansville. Rick, tell them, baby. That's right. Wednesday night in Evansville, things are going to get wild. Now you bleach blonde imitation stuck your nose in somebody else's business, and now you're going to have to pay. You guys are tough when there's six of you on two. Now here's a word from Austin Idol. I'm going to be totally honest with you. There's very little that Austin Idol does without receiving pay for. But I'm going to make one exception, and only one exception. I want you to take a good look what this says on this blackboard. You don't have to be an Einstein to read it. It says D-Day. And the D stands for Dundee. You see, Dundee, you owe me something. You owe Jerry Lawler something, but Lawler can't collect. So I'm going to be the dude that does the collecting. And believe me, when I say I'm going to collect Jack, I'm going to collect because, you see, you put a good friend of mine out of wrestling. And you're costing me money, too, because now I don't have half of the AWA Southern Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. D for Dundee. D for destroy. D for destruct. D for demise. I'm going to wipe you out, Jack. Uh, it doesn't make any difference where it is, but when we lock up, I'm going to kick your butt over that arena. Okay, let's get them back in here. Here they come right now. Yes, sir. Second fall. Same song, second verse, Buddy Landau. Uh, no, that is the fact. All right, bell time. Fall number two, and here we go. Billy Travis, Dutch Mantel, the winner and loser. Mantel and Landau up by one fall. Landell got the assist on that last one, uh, an illegal assist, too, as he kneed Billy Travis in the back when he was over on the ropes. That allowed Mantell to take advantage of the situation and get the three count on Billy, and uh, as a result, it's Mantell and Landell leading one fall to none in an expiration of time match. Mantell, whip across the ring. Travis ducks under, nice press by Travis. Mantell on the mat, counts at one, and two, and Mantell kicks out at the two count. I'd like to see you do that again. Landell issuing a challenge to Billy Travis. He said, hey, I'd like to see you do that again. Well, you may get his wish here. Billy Travis, fine, fine young wrestler. Bag made. Mantell being sent outside. Landell, wow, what a chop he put on Billy Travis. Travis whipped into the turnbuckles. He's over there. Is he going to tag? Yes, he does make the tag. And here's Tracy Smothers. Tracy did not see much action in the first fall. He was in there for a while. Landell slipping that arm up behind him. Tried to hammer it. Couldn't do it. Tracy tries to reversal. Landell immediately heads for the ropes to get that hold broken before Tracy can set up on it. Minute and a half gone. Second fall of action. First fall went almost four minutes. Tracy Smothers. Caught in the midsection by Landell. Landell tags the Dirty Dutchman out of Royal Trough, Texas. He's in with that gloved right fist to the midsection. Smothers off the ropes. Hangs on to Dutch. Shoulders are down. One. Down to two again. And Dutch Mantell able to roll those shoulders up and stop that count. Tracy Smothers. Good moves. Air pulling. That's what put him down to the mat. Dutch Mantell caught at it. The referee made him break. Now backing him away. Referee stepped in between them because they both had their fists doubled. They tie it up, middle of the ring. Tracy Smothers. Tracy showing a bit more aggression today than we've seen from him in many of his past matches. Good sign, maybe, for Tracy Smothers and his partner Billy Travis back over in the corner. Tracy slipped away from him. He does not go all the way to the corner for the tag. I thought he was going to head for Travis and get a tag on it, but Tracy stays in there. Mantell back outside, and it's Buddy Landell facing Tracy Smothers. 
Two minutes, 40 seconds gone. Here's the conference. Buddy Landell, Dutch Mantell. Buddy, the one in the ring. I got Landell locking those legs, putting the pressure on Tracy Smothers. No way he's going to pin him with his hold, but boy, he can sure put some pressure on him. Billy Travis leaning in from outside. And hang in there, Tracy. He can get over here and, and get the tag. Landell tags Dutch Mantell. They've got Smothers over in the corner. Mantell, right fist. Yeah, he had it doubled up. Smothers. Off the rope, holds on, and Mantell misses with a drop kick. Tracy tags Billy Travis. Travis with a cover on Mantell, but only got a one count. Travis, right fist. Boy, got him with an uppercut. Mantell on the mat. Travis going to drop down, but Mantell had moved, and Billy Travis's knee hits that canvas. Dutch. Seizing on the weakness here, goes for that knee. He was kicking him behind the knee. He saw what happened when Travis hit the mat. Now Mantell making the tag. Here's Buddy Landell. He chops him down to the mat. Travis reaching for a tag, but he's on the wrong side of the ring. Mantell grabs him. Smothers and Landell about to get into it while Dutch is choking Billy Travis with the ropes over here. Now, Buddy Landell works on the left knee. Landell, boy, just popped that foot out from under him. Spins the toe hold. Like he didn't have enough trouble to get his leg kicked out. Spins on the toe hold as he stepped over on it. And Travis having not a good day. Landell takes him over close to the corner, and the tag is on Dutch Mantell. We pass the five-minute mark in the second fall of action. We've got about two and a half minutes to go in our expiration of time, so Smothers and Travis, uh, if they're going to get back in one, this may be it. No, uh-uh, he missed it. One, two, no, he got that right shoulder back up again. I was going to say, if they're ever going to get back even here, well, they're going to have to get out of the hole. They've got themselves in quite a hole at this point. Billy fired across the ring. Drops with a big elbow. Travis trying to get to the corner and tag Tracy Smothers. Dutch makes sure that he doesn't. Double hands him in the lower back. Tags Buddy Landell. Landell back and Travis in the corner. Look at him. Go after him in there. Referee and Landell having an argument here. Tracy Smothers jumps in. He's been watching what Landell was doing to Travis. Travis, right hand, battling back against Landell. Mantell leans in there, pulled him back on the ropes. Tag made by Landell, and here comes Dutch. Dutch. Travis slips him down. One, two, can't make it stick. Boy, what a move. Thought maybe Billy had him. And this thing could have been evened up. Travis again, using the right hand. We got about 60 seconds to go. One minute left in our expiration of time. Here's Tracy Smothers taking on both of them after the tag. Everybody in the action in the ring. Landell, body slams, Tracy Smothers, Billy Travis working on Mantell in the corner. Landell drops on Smothers. Look out, he's got the figure four leg lock. Figure four leg that's lock, it. and that's going to be it. Seven minutes, 22 seconds. It's going to be two falls in a row for Mantell and Landell. Got the submission on Tracy Smothers in the second fall, and with the time running out, 
That means that Landell and Mantell have put it together for a victory. We're going to take time out, check the clock, back in a moment. By God, that's what we had today. I'm going to tell you, I love that last match. I mean, that's not to say I love to see Travis and Smothers got beat. They got beat by a better team, as a matter of fact. That's true. Uh, it was a good, experienced team against a relatively inexperienced young team and good action all the way. Good, David. tough match. And also, Tony Falk, a loser again. He's now 0-38 in the 38. territory. And yeah, we got that in the record book, so mm -hmm. that is forevermore right there. we got to get out of here. Next week, we'll be back for Dave Brown. Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.